All right, hello everyone. Thanks all for making it out. We've got a jam-packed day of Netrunner discussion ahead of us. It is day six of Rebellion Without Rehearsal release season, and we have 13, uh, in air quotes, cars to discuss today. Uh, and I am pleased to be joined by three fantastic guests. First up, Izzy. It's been a big day for you, Izzy. Uh, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about who you are and, and maybe why this has been a, a big day? That's fantastic. And I know you said this in your article, but do you want to give a very brief little description of what that what that means for people who maybe missed your your lovely article? Oh, hold on, hold on. I am once again, I have once again forgot to turn you guys on y'all onto the stream. Izzy, would you mind introducing yourself all over again while I l s smile sheepishly? Hey everyone, I'm Izzy. Um, I'm a member of the Querying the Message testing group and a host of that podcast. And as was announced today, I am the new community team lead for Null Signal Games. So you'll be hearing a lot more from me over the in the course of the future. I'm looking My forward first intro to. My was way cleaner. <laughs> that's well. That's why. That's why most people do takes. Uh, but of course, we're doing everything live. Javi. Do you want to give everyone a little bit uh, an introduction of who you are and what you do and uh, how long you've been playing Netrunner for? Hi everyone, so Javi here. Um, yeah, I've been playing Netrunner back end of the Fancy Flight games, it's on the last set, uh, so mostly you've been playing in the NSG era. Um, yeah, and I've been part of NSG Organized Play, I think, since 2021, um, and also do a little bit for visual as well. All right, uh, last but most certainly not least, we've got Neuropancer. Hello, Neuropancer, do you want to introduce yourself and, and uh, talk about your your Netrunner origin? <laughs> yeah, sure thing. So, hello, my name is uh, Neuropancer, or Pants, uh, if, if you're into brevity and all of that stuff. Uh, I've been playing Netrunner since right around the first time, like the, the time the first MD MWL came out, so 2016, I think, is uh, right around when that happened. And... You may know, you may also know me from the Slums cast and or if you've watched some big tournaments, I do some commentary on those streams. I am very right. happy to be here. We've got some cool cards to talk about. We've got some cool cards and we've got a lot of them to talk about. So first up, we've got a card called Stoke the Embers. It is a 4-2 agenda initiative and its rules text is bad news, folks. I wait in line for 16 hours to see the queen, but by the time I got there, she was fucking dead. So, Pants, I actually might go to you. What do you? What's your evaluation of this kind of card? What stood out to you at uh, at first? Yeah, yeah, we we talked about this a little bit on Slumscast, and I think uh, my my take has maybe softened a little bit since then. I mean, sixteen is still a big number; is the biggest thing that stands out to me. But I think that that's the only reason you're really going to play this card. It's just like you you don't see the number sixteen very often. And it is a large effect in magnitude, even if it isn't the strongest effect in general. Yeah, I guess easier or or Javi, either you jump in. I guess like, do you feel like we need to print this kind of Reina hate like so targeted right before she rotates? I just think that if Headlock Reina is good, then the game isn't good. So it's important that we have these things. And these kinds of things like force the runner to spend a lot of time, like 16 hours, it's a really big number. And to get into the server and have it already be fucking dead, like you don't want to be that runner. Mm -hmm. By representing the UK, it just feels too soon to be talking about the queen, you know? <laughs> Terrible times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know, I think we we that card definitely is going to have a big impact on the runner meta going forward. Next up, we have Piranhas. This is a 5-6 Codegate Illicit AP, and uh, its rules text is, At Ham Beef, love to get a bite on that. Thank you for sharing. So This is just pure value, I think. It's, th this, is, this is a great NBN ice. Loving to get a bite on that is already what you want to do out of Honestly, most horizontal decks, so this slots into a bunch of things out of MDM. 
I guess, what, what do you think are the be- are the most like consistent byte synergies for these asset decks? They're not maybe springing to mind for mm. me right away. I guess it really remains to be seen if more byte support is coming in the cards that we haven't seen yet. It's going to be hard to evaluate this without having those in front of us. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. Th- that is a good point because actually, I can't think of a big anti synergy, which is ubiquitous vig. You don't want to bite the hand that feeds. So, oh, that's a really good shout out. Yeah, I mean, like we we kind of haven't seen that much additional support for advanceable assets NBN, but these two cards being anti synergistic maybe suggests that NSG is kind of just abandoning that, which is always a little bit sad. But you know, ubiquitous mm-hmm. vig didn't end up doing that much, so maybe it's the right call to try and go for a different direction in their NBN assets. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, the Slumscast brought us one more card. This is one cost, sun commandment, operation, mandate, and it's rule text. Wow. Just watching CNN channel here, amazed by how well they, how they know all the news so well. Extraordinary. And I think, you know, this callback to breaking news is like, you know, I love these like kind of quiet references and callbacks both mechanically and in names to like old cards from ffg i think it's a great way to show that like mm-hmm. we don't just dis- we're not there's not antagonism it's just a we're the new people picking up the cards on the block yeah, an important thing to point out here is something that we actually we talked about this card for probably three or four minutes before we picked up on the word all it is important to realize that for like, I can't remember a card in Netrunner where you get to know all of the news so well for only one credit. Yeah, it's actually, it's, again, it's another good tie into the all-seeing eye as well. And, like, I think it's, like, a fun idea to combine some of these effects and Ooh, bundle them and see idea. how much you can you can put in these kind of archetypes. And, like, being punishment and, and tagging in one can be quite impactful. I guess... Izzy or, or Ian, any uh, any thoughts before we kind of move on to some of the other cards we got spoiled today? I mean, it seems good. Yeah. Not looking I mean, forward to having it played against me. <laughs> that's that's often how good cards are, but you know we'll see. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank you everyone for indulging the bit. Um, we I I would have loved to ruminate in it a little bit more, but we do have ten actual cards to cover today. Uh, so we've already eaten up, you know, the first ten minutes of, or so on this. So uh, this is one of the cards spoiled by the Null Signal Games uh, Null Signal Station podcast, which was hosted this week by Ian Ginevra. I'm sorry, not Ian, Ed Ginevra and uh manverupt mike who is the brains behind the whole spoiler season so huge props to all of them they've done a ton of work all individually in different ways for spoiler season uh, this is lycian multi-munition it is a three cost mythic destroyer ice with one strength out of hp and its rules text says when you res this ice choose one or more subtypes among barrier code gate and sentry this ice gains the chosen subtypes while it remains resed. When a turn ends, de-res this ice. And then it has three subroutines. If this ice is a code gate, the runner loses a click and a credit. If this ice is a sentry, trash one and solve program. If this ice is a barrier, gain one credit and end the run. So, Javi, I might go to you first. What's your initial kind of uh, impression of this card? It's text, it's art you know, how it fits in, how it references other stuff, just what your initial thoughts are. Well, my, my first thoughts in terms of, like, strength of the card, I thought, well, it's going to really suck if you um got to face check it with bank cards. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I read it correctly, that's actually free sub still, isn't it? <laughs> that's actually a great shout out. This is great, oh, like, wow. kind of anarch <laughs> tech. Because even though those subtypes normally aren't there unless the corp chooses for them to be there, or like they're not, like, active per se... Bankar just says, not nah, that's a net damage. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. but I, I think it's cool to see this type of ice. I, I, I love to, personally speak, I love to see ice start kind of, it kind of, I don't know, I struggle to describe it, but have a bit of a more dynamic effect rather than just once it's rest, it stays on the board and it just costs credits to deal with. So I really like kind of what, what it's trying to aim to do. I'm really taken with the art on this one. Mm-hmm. It's 
like it's just it's kind of peak net space vibes for me like this kind of overlapping layers of abstraction at the same time the zodiac theme is kind of interesting and the way that that kind of connects in to through a lot of the symbology that mercury is using it's interesting that both hospire right and a runner are using a lot of the same symbols Hmm. Yeah, that's and a, that's these really are also kind of the three mythic like parts of what makes up a chimera in mythology, right? The snake, the yeah, yeah, the yeah. lion and the goat. Yeah, 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 for sure. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, this and and you know this Lycian multi munition. I think Lycia is where the chimera was supposed to live in Greek myth. So it's like, oh, it's like a I didn't. I, I, yeah, no, that's yeah. good. I believe that's a that's a. Jeff half listening to Null Signal Station while uh, trying to do other stuff today, but uh, I believe that was from there. Um, Andre in the chat was asking, what happens if you hush Lycian Multimunition after it's rezzed? Um, and it, the warning on Lycian is like Stavka or something, where it creates this lingering effect. And so hushing after it's rezzed, I don't think will does not change its text. Um, like it just creates this this lingering static effect for the rest of the turn. Um, mm. But if Hush is on it ahead of time, this becomes a completely blank three cost ice. But you know, probably the corporate's not going to res this blank ice if you preemptively Hush it. Um, yeah. And I guess I guess in the same way that we talked about with the Vanguard, it's technically not blank, but that's like the only quarter case where it matters. <laughs> Yeah, that's very true. It's interesting because like the three cost slot for ice is pretty contested in HB decks right now. Like I'm not sure if yeah. this finds a slot in your PD list. I'm not sure it's quite quite above the curve enough to make it in there. Um that said, like in some other HB decks that have a little bit uh, maybe some of the D res synergy um some of those like then you're starting to have a little bit more of an interesting conversation if you're already planning to res your ice a bunch like three to res is a reasonable amount to do especially with like a vovo on the board yeah i actually i do want to shout out so uh someone did catch a ixeron caught a good thing here if you do hush the lycian it will um it will keep the lice it will stop the lycian from de-resing at the end of the turn Though I think it will it will continue to hold whatever subtypes were gained on it initially, which my goodness, that's not going to be a fun thing to remember five turns later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's an interesting little little interaction. Get, notepads are legal in all in all network events. So uh, if you're gonna if hush you a license multiple. <laughs> If you forget what it is, just click to move the hush away. Let it de-res, and you can just <laughs> go from there. <laughs> yeah, you need a folding count. You need a three-sided count. You need, what is it? How many comp... There's like a... It's... Yeah, it's, well, it's eight you, possible you need permutations, like dice, right? right? Six possible. Six possible? Guess, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You three and two and D6. one. Yeah. It's just the three faces, if they're there or not. Yeah, yeah. Anyway... Um, yeah, you know, I think you're right, Izzy. Exactly where this card fits in is a little bit unclear. I think it's really interesting as a corp where, like, you want probably to give this as many modes as you possibly can because mm -hmm. the runner losing a credit is good, trashing a program is good, gaining credit and ending the run is good, but as soon as they have one breaker, well, now, the like, just by installing a breaker, to some extent, the runner has turned off some of the subroutines here. Yeah. Um, and I feel like we I, should I mention Thunderbolt, it... too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually... Uh, a thing to shout out is that this card probably you know because this is always a destroyer ice it will always get the thunderbolt armaments text when rezzed so maybe thunderbolt armaments can play a lycian multi-munition and a vovo and just be spending a credit and making this two strength and four subroutines and you know potentially a little bit beefy Cool. I think with that, maybe we'll go on to the next card. And apologies, the cards are going to be coming fast and furious out of a bunch of different content creators. This is from Andre's great spoiler video on the Jinteki, host, uh, the Jinteki set of cards he was given. 
and they, I forget what that video was called, though it should be linked in the video description. Um, this is See How They Run, it is a four advancement, uh, two point agenda size security. When you score this agenda, agenda, give the runner one tag. Play a Psy game. If the bids differ, do one core damage. If the bids match, do one net damage. And a quote from Adrian CS, be patient when the prey panics, they lead you right to their friends. So Javi, I might throw to you again first, Donald. What's your, what's your uh, first impressions from this card? Uh, there's so much I love about this card. Um, you know, the artwork on it um, and the flavor text as well. Um, I think that's just really on point. Um, and the fact that it's, a, you know, you get to do a side game and if you you know, inverted brackets, win or lose it, you still get an effect off it is, is pretty cool. Um, and the tag is interesting as well. It's kind of, um, I'm sure we'll talk about it later. Um, but yeah, there's, there's probably quite a lot you could do with a tag. Um, so no, yeah, it feels like a really, really solid 4-2. And like I said, the art and the flavor text, I think it's just absolutely awesome. I'm excited to Name give this one too. a try. What sort of home are you excited to, to see the to like put this one in? Because you know, there's like some different things you could think about this being comparable to. Like, maybe this is going to be a bit of a reach, but like, this has some similarities to like uh, viral weaponization, which is probably not the first pull most people are going to have with this card. But it is this kind of like Jinteki damage. Uh, a thing. I think another, you know, another obvious parallel is maybe uh, cerebral casts, uh, uh, which was I mean, a was basically the effect of this, but on an operation. Though I guess it did, uh, yeah, it's somewhat different, but kind of similar. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those things where most decks are going to have a four two that fits maybe a little bit better than this, whether that's an off-world office or something that's a little bit more tempo positive. But like some of these scoring PEs that we've seen over the last few years, um, especially like loud, I think there's a chance that this could slot into like the blood in the water slot there. Um, or like uh, the, like getting it in a way where scoring it like sets the runner back is an interesting way if you're in an ID that can take advantage of that enough to be worth doing it. Is that being worth doing it that's interesting? Um, so like as we see a little bit more incidental tag punishment in Jinteki, um, like giving them that tag is meaningful. If you can score it at the start of the turn and give them the tag, you've got some interesting options. So a double advanced card, now you have more um things like that it's it's an interesting card there's a lot of little pieces of it where each of them individually like would you play orbital superiority if it did a core damage if it did a net damage um it's interesting i think another thing as well if i don't mind the math's right um i think if you play this in pe and you advance sorry install advance advanced it then you obviously advance it twice next turn um that means you're doing two damage somehow. Yeah, you're doing two damage and you've got a tag, which kind of opens up your end of the line plays. Yeah. You feel that particularly way inclined, which seems really like rude. Um, granted, <laughs> end of line is four inf, but you know. Um, and it kind of has that, you know, if you've slotted end of the line in PE decks, then it kind of makes that tag a bit more scary if you're face checking snares as well. So. Yeah, it's quite an interesting dynamic, this one. It's, um, I'd be interested to see where this goes. I'm kind of hoping it goes into a scoring type P deck rather than, you know, just install stuff on the board and see what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm going to be the, honest. The sheer number of games oh. that I've lost at, like, my local, uh, the, the, the local that I used to play at in, in grad school, to someone who played uh, snares out of, age, like, snares and... Uh, uh, uh scorched earth out of hb like <laughs> this reminds me a lot of that you get the incidental tags and suddenly they're dead and they're not expecting to be dead <laughs> yeah I, I i pulled up mitosis because i'm frankly pretty worried that just like mitosis shell game pe now suddenly has Ooh. a oh yeah as soon as i've doubled if i start my turn with 
uh, five credits and two advancements on a couple of cards on the board, the game's just over. Um, it's not a play pattern I'm super thrilled about being in the game. Uh, but... I don't you know. know how good that'll be. I know Diogene tried uh, Mitosis PE with Orbital Superiority last meta, and it. I don't think what we've seen brings that over the edge to being good enough that I would worry about it. <laughs> okay. I Well, the worst part about you saying that is that I'm like, do I have to make PE now? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. Oh, now I you know. understand the gambit. Uh, yeah, but no, you're right. There's there's some yeah. reasons that Mitosis PE hasn't taken over. I think this agenda is nice in that unlike Orbital Superiority, uh, this is, like, this becomes a two-piece, like, Orbital Superiority was required, okay, I have to tag the runner and then damage them. Um, like, Orbital Superiority always required an additional damage piece, whereas see how they run and the line is just a one-two card kill. Um, and so that, you know, taking one card out of a combo is generally something that, like, it doesn't say it mean the combo is going to suddenly be good. Uh, I think that's a really good point. But it does generally be something that I perk up and start to pay more attention to when a combo gets a card less. I do disagree with you, Jeff. I, don't, I, I think the worst part of... Mitosis PE potentially not being good is not that like maybe I have to make PE and try to break it. I think it's that even if it isn't good, I'm still going to find a way to lose it, like lose to it in an important tournament. <laughs> yeah. And, and and like also to be fair, like we now we just got several sets of like we've now seen that both Shaper and Criminal and Anarch now have ways to actively go and disrupt combos out of the corpse hand. And so it's not implausible for people to disrupt that. And there's tech cards that exist, right? No free lunch, stone ship chart room. Uh, you know, there are, there are things you can do that kind of will mitigate. See how it runs. Uh, PE kill potential, I guess. Um, but we've been talking about this card. And I've been doomering about it for a little bit too long. So let's move on to a card that I'm genuinely excited about. Uh, this is Sisyphus Protocol. It is a 5-2 agenda security. The first time each turn the runner passes a resed code gate or sentry, you may pay one credit or trash one card from HQ. If you do, the runner encounters that ice again. Uh, the flavor text is, Every mind can be dulled by repetition, even our praise. Strike when they get complacent, but before you get bored. Charlotte's fifth lesson. <laughs> This is my Jumon. <laughs> <laughs> this is. I think this is everyone's Jumon. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna make this work. I don't care that it's five two. I I feel you. I mean, this like ba back in back in the Red Tree days, we used to say a single Anansi is a scoring server. Like a single Anansi is a win condition now. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one of those genders you'd love to to score early because it'd be this. It's kind of wow. It is game changing if you have this one to be a, to be an early first score because the amount of taxing you can do is, yeah, really significant. And while I look at this card, I'm thinking, well, how much do you kind of try and um, oh, build around that? Because um, there's DR, DRM, which you could do maybe. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a really interesting card. Like I said, if you score it early, you can really change that game around. There was an important ruling that if you have two of them scored, because step one score one five two wasn't enough. If you have two of them scored, uh, both triggers do happen. Um, oh. So yeah. oh, wow. you can, with two Sisyphus protocols, they could break that Nazi three times before even getting to the second ice. And hey, we can even go further. We can score a third Sisyphus protocol, be at six points, and now the first time each turn the runner wants to pass a code gate or sentry, we just have to pay one credit to make them, or we have to pay three credits or three cards or some combination of those that adds up to three, and they get to encounter that same ice four times. You know, we can dream really big here. Uh, you know, that always was the problem with salvo testing. You couldn't score three of them. 
Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> genuinely, you look at these two cards and you go, if only I could score three salvos, right? Um, just think what I could do next to the runner. Um, More that's... seriously, the art on this is great. Um, yeah. Thinking about Phonatria, which has the same mm. dagger motif in the set, um, I think is a really nice touch. Um, I don't know if this is going to be quite good enough to not be jank. It's a 5-2. It's a, it's a hard shout. But it's a cool effect. I like playing Chinteki Glacier. I've been playing a bunch of just plain scoring Ag Glacier. It's not great. It's Ag Glacier. <laughs> it's fun, though. And this would be a fun card in Glacier. Especially if you can like sit there on a Lacosta and just know it's not a Bio Vault, actually. It's a 5-2. Oops. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it's it's it, this is one of those cards. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. I should let Ian, Ian or Neuropanzer get in here for some comments rather than eating up all the oxygen. I've been so good, and then like this card, uh, it's just like make me want to chat. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, you remember those 160 V shells? The like every single play that you make out of your remote is install advance advance. Like, I don't know the, those decks can't play only five threes, or if they do, they have to include more points than they have to. So like this kind of fits there i think there's something to it <laughs> yeah and certainly would be other gen uh sorry uh yeah gen ticket cards have come out today you're thinking yeah you probably you know jenkins probably in a better place to try and bust these this five two out if that's what your plan wants to be um yeah super interesting I, I, i'm trying sure to evaluate how impactful it will be um <laughs> Or how much uh, I wanted to be impactful. <laughs> a, a card that I I had actually forgotten about. Uh, Shoutouts to Crank to remind me of um, the card Code Replicator. Stacks with this. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I had a friend that played that all the time. That was a rude card. Yeah. I mean, Code Replicator did see real competitive play. Now, admittedly, the cost to get Code Replicator into play was a click and two credits, as opposed to six clicks and five credits. <laughs> Though, you know, as I as I say that, you know, like Regenesis is a card in Jinteki, and I yeah. think it's like really yeah. cool. I I kind of like so like Regenesis has mostly seen play as like a as like a okay, I need to get to my legal agenda points, and I want to get to four points really quickly. And just like score a blank five three, but score it as like a as a three four with some restrictions. Um, but like regenesising, using regenesis to score a Sisyphus protocol, like you still get all the effects from Sisyphus protocol, and I think it's like pretty cool to see a agenda that like I always want to call it like a, a battlefield effect kind of agenda. Like this is just a thing that will be active for the rest of the game. And there's not that many agendas in Netrunner that do that, and I think the ones that do, like, they're always really interesting, even if they're they tend to be a little bit more on the jank side typically than on the competitive side. Yeah, Regenesis is actually interesting because it sort of highlights why the cost options for Sisyphus Protocol are kind of interesting in and of themselves. It's fairly often in Jinteki that trashing a card from HQ is something you want to do. If you're feeding the runner bacterial programmings on an archives run, if you're like getting one card out of hand so that that's one less card that isn't snare in your hand, um, if you're sneaking sneaking something into archives uh, on a last click run so that you can regenesis it out next turn, like it, it's a surprisingly flexible thing, and in this case paired with the ability to just pay a credit instead if you're not getting value from it, it's a neat it's a neat cost. Yeah, it's a very cool little cost, and maybe we'll see more. I think we've seen a lot, but definitely not all of the Jinteki cards, so maybe we'll see some payout for, you know, just... Like, it's interesting to see some Jinteki cards that pay with costs from hand, and, I'm, you know, maybe we'll see some payoff for that uh, at some point, because we've seen a lot of Jinteki trash from hand stuff historically. Even, yeah. All right, uh, Ian. Any final thoughts before we move on to the next card that we uh, that was spoiled today? Uh, let's go for the next one. All right, sounds good. Next up, we've got Charlotte Casadore. Casador? I'm gonna say Casador and not put on a weird random syllable. Uh, th though it's maybe right, but uh, apologies to everyone in the world. Uh, zero to res asset clone. You may advance this asset. 
When your turn begins, you may remove one hosted advancement counter to gain four credits and draw one card. And then the second ability, trash, hosted at the pay cost is trash, hosted advancement counter, gain three credits. And it is two to trash and two influence out of the Jinteki. So, Ian, I'll let you take the first bite of this apple. Yeah, I mean, you're probably going to get bored of me saying this, but yeah, the art is absolutely fantastic on this. Um, and the effect as well, really strong, really, really strong. Um, you know, whether you want to drag um, the runner through a server, you're not going to lose out on that much, you know. Um, and if the runner doesn't get dragged through the server, then there's actually, yeah, that's quite a lot of value. A lot, a lot of value. Um, so yeah, really excited to see this one, and uh, I've got a funny feeling this is going to feature a lot of Genteki decks. The, the flavor text, the, yeah, the flavor text really is what stands out to me. Like, I, it, it, it sort of reminds me as like the opposite of GFI, where like you know GFI, you're like, oh, I don't know, maybe I actually have some sympathy for a few of the specific people working. This is like the exact opposite. This is like we are we're, we're gonna feature the biggest uh i don't know if we allow cursing on this stream but imagine no <laughs> imagine a yeah. lot of we're, that all <laughs> we're all good here <laughs> okay you can, imagine you can the biggest piece of shit you've ever met like <laughs> uh this this is that this is them on a card <laughs> <laughs> i just love working in the field like that's such a fucking dark statement with like <laughs> knowing what that actually means <laughs> mm -hmm. You're right. I had not stopped and seriously contemplated what that sentence actually implies, but that is that is yeah. very grim. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really interested to see what the play patterns with this end up being. Like, how often are you going to install Advance Advance this? It's like, it's interestingly, it's somewhere in between an NGO front and a Rashida. Mm hmm it's going to cost you a little bit more than a Rashida. At a minimum, it's a click for two credits. Like install advance, runner runs it, you pop it. It's a click for two credits. That's the second click on your NGO front, but not your first click. It's interesting. Seems like a... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, sorry. Go ahead. Um, It seems like a really interesting prov card, right? If you're able to kind of passively put put counters on this, it's it, and at only two influence, you can actually probably splash this pretty effectively. Yeah, uh, so someone thought. in chat mentioned BTL. That also seems like mm. when when actually advancing it is a good action once a turn. That's pretty great. Yeah, it's so also like. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Izzy. It's also like Rashida. You use it. It's gone. This, if you install advance, next turn you res it, you get your draw, you get your credits, and you look at your hand and you're like, I have no play. You just advance it again. And now the runner still has to get into the remote to deal with mm -hmm. it. Like it sticks around until you have your next play. And like, that's kind of cool. So it's very good comments in chat. And I was thinking the same is, does it uh, combo with Lacoste grid? And I think oh, if it, it does, does, that's really good. It good. It yeah, you, you can choose the order, right? So yeah, oh, yeah. So you really can... good. You can choose the order, and uh, yeah, so you can all, if you, like, and this is one of those things where, like, oh, this might be a nice payoff. There's been so many games of playing kind of Glacier Jinteki, where, you know, you're sitting there and you go, man, I got this Lacosta just generating counters, but it's not doing anything for me. Like, I'll advance the Lacosta on itself, and, like, now you have a card in your deck, and you just be like, yeah, it's always good. Like, I can just put this in the remote while I'm waiting for an agenda. And then if it picked up an extra counter at some point, I can just pop it and get that counter and turn it into cash and kind of start pushing through. So this definitely feels like it's, you know, a notable econ card for Chinteki. Yeah, yeah and, then, and as you pointed out, Rashida, like, you throw that in your scoring server for a turn. It's very good because it potentially forces a run or you get the Rashida effect, but then it's gone. This does sit around and, man, yeah, that, I... I I like this card. This makes me want to play Red Glacier again. Yeah, I this this and Sisyphean Protocol. I'm like, uh, there's uh, where Sisyphus Protocol. I'm like, maybe, maybe this does make me want to go and you know maybe this is what Atea has needed. Um, or or <laughs> more realistically, what Ag Infusion like 
friendly ag infusion glacier does where it just bumps it just boops you into an anansi over and over and over again and that's what we call friendly jinteki gameplay um it's not it's only had a couple He's more nice so many device. legs think of the hugs <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry is i didn't quite catch what you were saying if we just had a couple more nice pieces of Jinteki ice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if only we had a couple more friendly pieces of Jinteki ice. Apropos of nothing, here's Cloud Eater. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is a 10 to res, 6 strength, Sentry AP Destroyer Observer. Uh, it is unique. It says, whenever an encounter with this ice ends, if it was res this turn... Trash one installed runner card, unless the runner takes two tags or suffers three net damage. And then the subroutines are, trash one installed runner card, give the runner two tags, do three net damage. And its later text is, don't let it catch your scent. I'm almost wondering why they didn't put the snake on the Sisyphus protocol, because it feels like these two cards go very nicely together. Um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, Ian, so whenever I might, an I... encounter ends, text is mm, Jeff's kiss with Sisyphus Protocol. We're gonna like that. Mm. The when <laughs> past is less exciting, but when the encounter ends, text is just perfect. I, yeah, I believe that's the same. It's a similar-ish text to a Nazi, right? So whenever an encounter with a Nazi ends, it has some conditions. Cloud Eater doesn't even have these conditions, and it only costs two credits more, and you get a strength, and I would say arguably noticeably stronger subroutines like this feels like a a big chunky snake now if the runner has no installed cards because it's not the unless they can choose not to take two tags or the three net damage right and just not trash anything i uh, yeah because it's the corp would trash and the runner can just decline to take the alternative costs so yeah you can if the runner face checks into this blind the only thing that happens to them is they take two net damage they take three net damage and two tags um just a you know a casual two tags and three net damage yeah yeah so i guess it is boomerangable if you have no other board yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i mean this is this is a this is a hey Genteki was hearing that people were becoming less scared of you and uh, decided to get some get some new tech on the scene um yeah it's um in terms of the artwork again fantastic artwork and for people mm -hmm. who play spirit island give really that um that kind of sleeping there's a spirit island um spirit um that's a snake one of my favorite spirits actually and it just it gives a really much that vibe of you know, like that slumbering snake, and then when you wake it up, all bad things happen. Um, and that's kind of like if you face check this, it's just really bad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's, it's just awful. It's it's yeah. the first Jinteki like unique god ice that I've actually been excited about in a long time. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned about the unique part actually, because I've been like trying to evaluate that, thinking, well, if you choose to have more than one copy that kind of makes potentially more dead draws if you don't want to draw mm -hmm. it um but then if you only have one then you're less likely to draw it and use it so yeah that kind of unique part is really interesting it's probably one of the few unique cards i think in do you know what? i really want to slot this into my deck um yeah it's i think that makes i mean obviously just the the text on the card makes it obvious that you would want to play this out of a uh, ag infusion but I think it's also just a great include in Ag Infusion because that's less of a problem. A face down ice is a stronger card in Ag Infusion than it is in most decks. Yeah. I just wonder how Ag Infusion is going to afford 10 credits to res this. Like the the biggest problem with Ag Glacier <laughs> yeah. right now is the economy. It's <laughs> gutted. There's nothing. There's not even slots for it. It's, it's bad right now. Step one, get 10 credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, it's the it's also like the other drill tweet, right? Like, uh, please help me, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, help me budget help this. Me yeah. Help me budget I... this thousand on you know ten credits on snake, no credits on on agendas. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm supposed to res this and then score a five two. 
Yeah, that's step two. <laughs> well, it's worth it's it. For you win, you know. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me just get to fifteen credits. Okay, that's going to take me five turns, one click at a time. <laughs> there is. Look, all I will say is I have played exactly one game of Netrunner where I started the game by clicking for four, and I won that game. So clearly, that's a good strategy. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, Not as the corp, I hope. Uh, no, that was as the runner. <laughs> oh, I it even know the game, game you're talking about. Draft, so. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say. <laughs> the reference to the movie-length podcast you produced on the Roseville draft. Um, so yeah, I guess one final question for the panel here. Do you play more than one Cloud Eater in Jinteki? Is question one. I think you would. I think it depends on the other ice slots in the deck and what you're looking for. One or two seems very plausible. I don't think and it's that... over three, but I, I could I could see myself playing two a fair amount of the time. Yeah, I think I'm two as well. And then two, do we play this out of faction? Like, does NBN play Cloud <sighs> Eater? I suspect if you're playing Lightning Armaments, you might play this out of faction. Oh, true. Yeah. That'd be quite rude. Then also ends the run. That's nice. Yeah, I is it? I typed in oh, lightning and, and, and into when, my when little it, card search and went, "Oh triggers no!" Triggers the winning counter ends. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. No lightning. The, the um the agenda the four two. Oh oh it's oh! You're talking about the actual be... lightning. Yeah, the lightning laboratory uh, agenda. Yeah, there we go. Where you get to res this for free potentially. <laughs> oh. Moment of panic that it hadn't been out yet. <laughs> <laughs> And, like, with this out, like, suddenly the on-encounter effect is active every turn. Oh, my god! Yeah, that sounds... That's that's gross. Uh, oh, wow. You're welcome. <laughs> yep. I also see, you know, honestly, I'm not that excited to run into an Asmari list that just says, yeah, why would I play Surveyor? I can just play Cloud Eater and have a better ice. Yeah, it's twice the cost, but, you know, we're Asmari. We print money, right? Uh, so... <laughs> Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. Okay, well, now that we, you know, this is this is the doom and gloom net run, corpse are broken uh, cast, and I don't know that this card is going to change, but I've actually, I'll be honest, I've missed a lot of the tributary discourse today. This is another unique ice for Jinteki. So two unique Jinteki ice. This is tributary. This is a three to res, four strength code gate. Its text says, the first time each turn or run begins, you may move this ice to the outermost position, protecting the attacked server. The runner is now approaching this ice, uh, is the parenthetical rules text. Subroutines. You may draw one card. You may install one piece of ice from HQ, protecting another server, ignoring all costs. And then each piece of ice gets plus two strength for the remainder of the run. So, Izzy, I'll go to you first. What are your initial... What's the first thing that stands out to you on this card? I think it's cool. I'm thinking about it in Ag, where installing ice protects ignoring all costs and you want to hold cards. And I'm thinking about Ag a lot lately. I couldn't tell you why. Um, <laughs> doing that is, like, really useful, especially... Um, letting you play around pinhole, adapt very quickly to different board states, getting that unresed ice exactly where you need it to be. Um, the subroutines, it's somewhere in between, like it's not as bad as drafter, but it's worse than a lot of other things you could let happen. So you don't really want to be running through this all the time, especially if there's ice deeper in the server. It's interesting. Yeah, this this reminds me of, of Chum or what was it Inazuma? No, it was Inazuma does a different thing. Uh, right, Inazuma was yeah, cannot jack out. But like the this yeah. like Chum style effect of oh yeah, the next dice is going to be the the fearsome one. But you know the problem with with Chum is always was always it, it's a positional ice. A tributary is also positional, but it solves its own positional problem. Red tape mm -hmm. is another call out from Andre. I mean, for the cost, it's pretty taxed, isn't it, as well? Um, yeah. I mean, I've not done the maths on like common Colgate breakers, but yeah, for the, you know, for free cost, 
than having a full strength of two subs. That's quite, yeah, I think it's quite handy. Um, to me, it feels quite strong, actually. Um, <laughs> Because it's play, because I've not played Iron Fusion for a long, long while. But one of the five cards you used to hate seeing would be Hippo, wouldn't it? Um, and I think this protects yeah. against Hippo-ish. I say protects; it sacrifices itself. But I think that works, doesn't it? It sure yeah, does. Yeah, you, it this gets Hippo instead of your Anansi. Yeah. 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 Which, that feels like a decent enough trade. <laughs> yeah, and as he calls out, there's also his Bankar attack. Uh, once this oh, is yeah. raised, Bankar is effectively yeah. blanked. Uh, well, okay, not effectively blanked, uh, because I think there's some interesting counterplay with Tributary, because it is only the first time each turn a run begins. It's not like once per turn mm -hmm. when a run begins. It's the first time. And so the runner can spend a click to run a server they don't care about Tributary moving to and have Bankar on a different server or something. Well, uh, won't we got, they we encounter the outermost ice then anyway? Like, there's no window to jack out on yeah, run before the first ice, is there? So, I'm yeah, yeah. Better, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm talking about doing it as two clicks. So click one, you run a server that you don't care about. And you have, like, let's say Bankar is on the scoring remote, server one. You, like, click one, run HQ. And so Tributary's effect fires then, because uh, it's the first time he's trying uh, to run oh, yeah. speak up. Sure. And sure. then yeah, not, you, may only you, use this one's I got yeah, you then survive the HQ run, hopefully. Though, honestly, that's looking <laughs> dicier and dicier with every passing day. And then click two, you bank hard into server one with whatever whatever you have left. Uh, so It's also cute with yeah. Atea, where Atea fires, you install the ice, or sorry, you, a tributary fires, you install the ice on the other server, and then you Atea something into the server you want. And so if you have a spin doctor in hand and tributary, it's like the runner has to pay their four credits with buzzsaw or you're just going to say, actually, this run, you're not getting the agenda. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And actually, this does get around the, like, revised uh, access rules that rule that the rules team implemented for ganked. Uh, because, you know, the, if you Atea and put something in the server, well, it's during the run. So it will still be kind of a, a forced access if the runner wants to make it all the way through. Uh, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. I think my ultimate take here, it, I, I think it seems like a strong card, but one of the biggest things is just I have learned that if it if a Netrunner card has ignoring all costs, you should never bet that it's going to be weak. <laughs> <laughs> ignoring all costs is some pretty good text in Netrunner usually, yeah. 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 Unfortunately, it's preceded by a subroutine arrow. <laughs> yeah, but it still is the three words ignoring all costs. Like, I'm... The, they speak strongly to me. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, the subroutine arrow is probably the most balancing mechanic you could possibly put on a card. Uh, but, <laughs> and uh, Tanuki is asking in chat, this has to be res to be active. Yep, this isn't, this doesn't have former carries uh, absolutely monstrous text of, uh, but look, just to show the difference here, Former carry says when the runner approaches a server, you may res and then do this text. And so because it says you may res, the text then has to be active while it's unresed, uh, which is kind of wild. Um, but yeah, I think this is a neat little role player for certain types of Jinteki Glacier decks. So it's, you know, I think it's been really cool to see a bunch of Jinteki kind of uh, support back to back to back. Uh, but now we're on to NBN. Uh, we've got Stoke the Embers. This is a four advancement two point agenda i feel like i've forgotten how to call for how to say four two basically uh this is a initiative subtype when you score this agenda gain three credits and place one advancement counter on an installed card when you install this agenda from anywhere except hq you may reveal it if you do gain two credits and place one advancement counter on an installed card uh, up next, present Tavares State Funeral. So, yeah, Ian, I, do, oh, sorry, Pants, yeah. please go ahead. Uh, yeah, obviously we discussed this on Slums Cast. I think I, I was blinded at the moment by thoughts of, you know, combo being back and all of that. Since then, uh, again, shout outs to Cranks kind of pointed out 
there you can actually just get good value out of this in much simpler ways like I don't know, throw that counter on a nest and chest foe that's already in faction. Throw it on a Vlad grid that's already in faction. Like I I think this card is a little stronger than I thought it was on the on the on the cast. Yeah, it seems good value. Um something I was gonna point out was there seems to be quite a lot of um lore of this um of this set in this card as well. Mm. Um so it looks like there's a new president. Um yeah, it's been valved in. Looks like it's about to veto the automatum initiative. And it looks like that the previous president, uh, yeah, got uh, yeah, died somehow. <laughs> yeah, you don't usually have a, a state funeral in the middle of a contentious political cycle that portends some climactic events for sure. Um, I think yeah. you know, it's worth calling out that this is a like a really, I think, direct uh, Epiphany Analytica support card, right? When are you not installing oh, yeah. cards from HQ? Well, when you're using the Epiphany click ability uh, and you can just go and fire that off and then this comes in with an advancement counter. So it's almost like a 3-2. And so, you know, once we're in the realm of a 3-2, suddenly we're in the real realm of doing some some uh, some serious scoring shenanigans business. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, another thing to call out, uh, just a, it, that Conrad was the one who pointed out the synergy, Restore also works with this. That is the only other one uh, I could yeah. think of off the top of my head, though. <laughs> yeah, there's like some rotated cards that probably work. Um, yeah. But but yeah, nothing it's off the... the uh, nothing the in the Oh, DRM that's a good question. Uh, no, DRM actually goes to... Yeah, you install from HQ with DRM. Oh, of course you do, yeah. What about that yeah. Genteki one where it's the... Um, oh, I can't remember the name of the card, but it's the one with the kind of... The fox oh, on it. Uh, Hakurendo? That's the one, yeah, because that's Source from Archives, isn't it? Oh, does it? I think so, yeah. You're... You're totally right. You're right. Yeah, that's Wait, so, okay, oh, so we can Kakarembo a Stoke the Embers onto a San San City Grid and <laughs> score it. And all it costs yeah. is three influence. <laughs> yeah, just... Yeah, just. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's I a mean, couple of cards... That, that's a pretty strong effect, to be fair. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's like cheaper than a biotic labor, right? Like, if we're gonna buy, if you were to biotic labor, like, use your idea ability and install this, like, it would cost you more influence and more credits significantly. So, who knows? Maybe we're in for a uh, Kakarembo Stoke the Embers uh, combo Pravdevost. Yeah, and and, uh, and I will point out, uh, like the number three in that first ability, the 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 like Epiphany slash Restore slash Kakarembo. That like the number three is really relevant because calibration testing costs exactly three. <laughs> mm, that's a really good shallot as well. Yeah, like this, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. This gets you five credits and, uh, or this can potentially get you five credits and two advancement counters, which is arguably more payout than off world office, um, mm -hmm. which is like obviously the premier four two in the format, I think. So, like, this, I guess I would say this card seems costed to move, uh, and it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see if it does. Um, but, Izzy, I also want to make sure you get a chance to, to chat about this card a little bit. Yeah. I just think the theming on this one is where it's at for me. Like, I haven't figured out all the lines to decide that this is valuable or not, or whether the, you know, non-liquid results that it gives you compared to, like, an off-world office's liquid credits is, is going to be worth it. But, like... Uh, the president dying on a Netrunner card is like, or or the president's funeral on Netrunner card is like, it's, it's a really interesting thematic line to be pulling on. I'm really excited to see the rest of this story come out through uh, the rest of the cards coming out in the set and, and the fiction around it. Like, I really want to know what the story is around this. Yeah, and like this is and a this rep driven sets are really cool. Yeah, this this represents I think you know there there was not a clear climax card at least to me i think there was some intent for climax cards in borealis but like stoke the embers is delivering in a, a a more a more pointed level than i think we've seen before and hopefully we see some other stuff tying this in 
Uh, we are, however, I realize, hitting the hour, or just shy of the hour mark on the actual cast. Oh. We still have three cards to get through, so I'm going to keep us moving a little bit. Uh, this is Capacitor. This is a four-cost, three-strength barrier. It says, while the runner is tagged, this ice gets plus two strength. It has a subroutine. Gain one credit for each tag the runner has. Subroutine, end the run. Sebastiao gritted his teeth as more and more indicators glowed red. And this is one influence out of NBN. And uh, I, I want to pass on uh, Wentagon, a previous guest, saw this card and said this needs to get posted in uh, Forbidden, what was it, Forbidden Eats? Forbidden, forbidden Snacks. snacks. <laughs> Thank you, Forbidden Snacks. Uh, and now I can't see this as a bunch of candy buttons I want to eat. <laughs> oh no what? oh no the autistic urge to eat the game piece <laughs> I feel you <laughs> like I don't know it feels weird because I feel like actually playing ice out of a uh, out of an NDN deck right now <laughs> this is ice and it says while the runner is tagged they need to have turbine down with their cleaver <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, for a, you know, that's not that's not nothing, but yeah, I that's mean, that's not I think nothing. It's not yeah. nothing. It's you know, this is probably not the most exciting piece of ice right now. Uh, I think ping at half the cost does much the same job as capacitor, um, though. For those rare runners who maybe are on Kurapira or on Propeller, uh, I think capacitor does pose a real challenge to them, uh, especially after say an Oppo research. Um, Oh, Shishu calling out Acme. That's a thing I actually hadn't seen anyone mm -hmm. mention. This is maybe, I mean, this is no data word, but it's not, not, it's not nothing either. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, they get impression, the Yuan Arc ID um, wants to float tags. This kind of helps restart, um, but I'm not sure if it's enough to push this card to see lots of play but it's hard to say isn't it you just never know what the meta is going to shake out to be like yeah i think that this has a potential meta role i think while cleavers in standard that's going to be a, a limited role but you know maybe maybe one day we'll see a cleaver ban and, and all course can rejoice but i think this ice i think it's actually a little more interesting to talk about this is piranhas this is a five to res six strength ice code gate illicit ap as an additional cost to res this ice, take one bad publicity or remove one tag. And it has three subroutines. You may draw a card, do a net damage, end the run if there are more cards in HQ than in the grip. Eat, grow, deny a truly ravenous generation. This is three influence. It's quite funny because when some people saw the text version of this card, and I think everyone thought this was a Wayland card, not an NBN card. <laughs> I can kind of see why. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. I must admit, for if you were taking a bad pub on this card, I, I think you would probably expect the numbers to be maybe a little bit higher. I don't know. It's interesting because it... someone. I witnessed someone playing Valentau out of R+, and I just can't help but think that this might be a nicer slot in that spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely it, it a little... seems... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, it seems yes. great out of outfit as long as you're willing to pay the three influence. That is a big as long as, though, because three's a lot. Yeah, I you know, this card's really interesting because it's like, oh, it's it's... Doing net damage, which is usually seen as like a kind of Jinteki color pie kind of thing. Um, but I think, you know, to me, maybe the thematic link to some extent is like, you know, your digital life as like, oh, NBN can get some card draw. And so this is like trying to be the the card parallel to Valentau, um, you know, to the point where they have very, very similar numbers. Though Piranha says a card is worth about two credits, which you know that's a, a long-standing debate, I guess, in the network community of what a how many credits a card is worth. But 
It's really interesting with this one, because like on Valentau, the bad pub directly impacts the final subroutine, whereas on this one, the cost to res it doesn't have any impact on the actual impact that it has on the runner. But also, like it's way easier to build a deck for big money than big hand size, unless you're playing this in PD for the six hand size. Like <laughs> Chances are the runner is going to be able to go diesel run it and let it fire. And that's not great for the runner, like, but is this good enough if the runner can just play a diesel and run through it? I don't know. It's really interesting. I think it probably is. I, I did see someone propose a very interesting server of data loop into piranhas, uh, which I think <laughs> is kind of cute. <laughs> that is cute. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's fun. No good I, 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 I appreciate that it's. I, I appreciate that it's situational. Like, I... There is a place for ice that is just like, yep, this is a snap include, but I appreciate that there's, I, I, I like ice that isn't just that, where it's like, you know, there are times I'm going to think about this and there are times that I'm going to like think about it and the answer is no. Yeah. You both know, I think it... and oh. Sorry, both this and Valentau have an interesting thing in that now there's a runner that is likely going to be making tag, making runs while tagged much easier mm -hmm. to take that remove one tag cost with Sebastian in yeah. the pool, I suspect. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a very good shot. And NBN often will kind of generate tags at extra sometimes. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting card. And, yeah, I think, it, you know, it's also worth saying, like, hey, this is one of the few ice that probably does not care about Hush. Uh, in fact, this gets better if Hush is on it, but, like, it doesn't lose <laughs> a lot of punch if the runner hushes it. And I do think that uh, probably for the health of the game, we want to make sure there's a good mix of ice that's not hushable. And that ice is probably always going to be a little bit less exciting than ice that can be hushed because it's going to have fewer abilities. But yeah, it might fill a niche in the right circumstances. Uh, and this is the it map. makes it makes ice we work Just look at that. Look at that mouth. Like, how can you shut that up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I you know we've been talking about the art a little bit i mean we've been mentioning it but i like the art is has been great on so many of these i really do lo like this is a, a fantastic piece of art um so I'm, I'm very glad to see it in in the card pool all right well let's hit our final card of the day um this is the one where they just decided to break eternal i think uh, this is one cost, <laughs> Southern Commandment, Operation Mandate. Draw two cards. You may play one non-terminal operation from HQ. Threat three, if this operation is the first mandate you played this turn, you may pay three credits to gain a click. And it's three influence, two to trash. Epiphany employees learn to not make weekend plans. Yeah, for people that kind of know me, how I usually play corp decks, it's all well, I always try and play combo type decks. And I see this card, I'm thinking, oh, I just, th there must be some way I can break this card. <laughs> I feel like it's my life mission to do it now. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, one. So, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go, go, go ahead. I, yeah, it's like, oh, once you're on threat three, sudden commandment plus subliminal messaging, I think, is a like an in-faction biotic labor for two cards, but conveniently sudden commandment draws you two cards. Um so, you know, maybe maybe we'll see some some NBN fast advance combo back on the menu. Uh, which is kind of interesting. And Gwen is asking, is this the only mandate in the card pool it's... barring future spoils? And yes, this is the this is the introduction of the mandate subtype, as far as I'm aware. But pants, it's really I'll cool. let you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, so something that was brought up on the cast, like it, it isn't just a combo enabler, though I think we should definitely talk about the fact that it's a combo enabler, but uh, this into your daily life is potentially very strong. If, if you're in something like a punitive shell where, you know, this just lets you, it gives you extra clicks to play more money cards, gives you extra clicks to get more punitives, uh, potentially draws you into your last punitive if that's a line that you have to take, something like that. 
Yeah, a combo piece giving you draw reach can sometimes mean that you can like combo off even if you normally couldn't all the time, which is definitely uh, quite cool. I mean, it does I generally think... feel like a good value card, doesn't it? You know, outside of combo. You're absolutely right. It's, there's a lot of value for one credit there. I think this is going to feel pretty good. I think this is going to feel a lot like the way the one or two greasing the palms fit into like a PD list in a lot of rushy yellow, where like just having something that kind of smooths out in this case, the draw and greasing's case, the money as you're trying to like move cards around, like it's just good value. You're never sad unless like the one credit is super critical to just play this instead of playing the operation you were going to play anyways and just get a little bit more off of it. Yeah, I think that's a, that's actually a great way to see. It's like, oh yeah, this is kind of a one credit tack on to another operation that just makes that operation better. Like it it means that that those two cards get replaced, so you're kind of plus one card from where you were going to be, which is a, a nice little smoother. Just like kind of greasing the palm puts you a, a couple credits ahead. Um, sorry, so because I'm probably probably because you know this is the way my wa brain is wired. Um, you know, as soon as I saw this, I thought, you know what? I'm sure you could do something with Mad on this, and I thought, okay, you probably could do something with Mad and Orb, then Mad Orb, and then maybe Base as well. I'm thinking, I'm sure there's something there, but I think I need more time to play about with it. Yeah, I, I saw someone in chat calling out. You can play Sun Commandment, mutually assured destruction. It gives you a click back. And then you just do a, a polite little market forces love tap and drain the runner for all their money. Um, and then you oh, can I... worry about how to win from there Ooh. next turn. I must market thinking... forces, that's smart. Yeah. I was thinking mad and um, using the mad to chew to the base. Mm. Um, and then that gives well, you two clicks, doesn't it? It so... sure does. And that's not <laughs> probably too much of an ask. Maybe not too much of an ask. Yeah, I mean, so... But yeah, sudden commandment works with pivot, which also works with bass, and also gets any of the operations we just talked about, right? Oh wow, yeah. I guess yeah. I, a pivot can't search up the agenda. Never mind. But it can install. Uh, it can install a bass if it's already in HQ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, it can't search at bass. The same threat but... level as sudden commandment. So you know, if sudden commandment's good, then pivot's good too. Yeah, yeah, they'll fire off together pretty nicely. I guess, yeah, so Sudden Commandment plays Pivot. Pivot costs a click, but then Sudden Commandment gives you the click back, so it's it's playing a Pivot but drawing two cards, uh, which is probably pretty well, nice. Well, the, the, the Pivot... Oh, okay, yeah, the Pivot does cost an extra click, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this doesn't say ignoring yeah. additional costs uh, because we're, we're not, we're, uh, you know... And then she decided not to reprint Accelerated Diagnostics, which part of me is a little bit sad. And then the other part of me, the larger part of me, just thinks, yeah, maybe this was a sensible decision. Um, <laughs> same, same. The second part is much larger. <laughs> I mean, if it ignored all costs, like, just imagine how many things would have to get points in Eternal. You wouldn't be able to play both of them. So, like, <laughs> we should just be glad for this because now we can play both of them. Yeah, though that's definitely true. I, I I've jokingly said in the eternal chat in GLC, who's ready to give CI more points? Um, because <laughs> uh, cerebral imaging is uh, gotten honestly a lot of different tools this set. I'll say like my my out of the way combo that I'd love to try and make work in standard is finding a way to use business as usual, sudden commandment, and like a bunch of HB cards to score four points in a turn on two different agendas. Uh, I don't think it'll be good, but it does seem kind of like a fun thing to set up. Um, you know, using stuff like red level clearance to install extra cards. Um, you know, I think it was, yeah, I think it's, you know, maybe we can find, Wait. you can, oh, sorry, go ahead, Izzy. We could do it in Jinteki and use Trick of Light and have it all come together to score out a Sisyphus protocol. Okay, now we're cooking with some gas. There <laughs> we go. <laughs> uh, can't beat skateboard tricks, can you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, you know, the, the turn I really want to do is use Sun Commandment, play a Bionic Labor, and a Red Level Clearance, get a Wage Workers down, 
uh and like play a couple like play one more event or operation get my wage workers clicks from there and then just start scoring and comboing off so um yeah that I don't sounds know. like I, a blast yeah i you know i th i suspect this i suspect izzy you're right this card's just going to go in a lot of nbn decks as like a oh yeah this just makes the operation i was going to play a little bit better um I'll, i guess it's a little bit of a shame because most nbn decks are playing like hedge funds and oppo researches and this can't play oppo research um but uh <laughs> but you know it does just make all of those operations a little bit better and so this could see a play in quite a bit of deck quite a few different decks um milanomi saying threat three sudden commandment into pivot into big advance big deal is to fast advance to five cost agenda from the deck for 23 credits i like it i like it quite a bit Barking. <laughs> go <laughs> oh this is yeah this is genius yeah i this is one of those cards uh, wait, where wait, like wait, wait, oh, terminal sorry. Sorry, what'd you say? Did you feel terminal? You, Sudden gets this... the pivot. Pivot oh, gets the pivot. The yeah, okay, the pivot. There we go. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The combo you were calling out. All right. Well, nice. I we are a little bit oh my yeah, we're we're well over our hour now, and I don't want to keep you all too long as much as I would love as much as I would love to chat with you guys about the whole set for quite a long time. Um but um, actually, hold on. I just so attack just very quickly. Um, the operation you play off of sudden commandment doesn't count towards wage workers. So you need to play two additional operations uh, to trigger wage workers and sudden commandment all in one turn. But I think HB is up to the task, at least in theory. Um, but with all that said, let's let's start wrapping up. You know, we are past the halfway point, um, so I might to mix up the question a little bit you can still say something you're looking forward to the most um but that i'll say that can be a card that you're really looking forward to playing with or it might be a thing you're waiting to be spoiled so izzy i'm going to start with you what are you most excited to uh do either when the set releases or are you hoping to see in what's up what is upcoming I'm, I'm just so excited to get into the criminal cards i'm so excited to get the rest of Mercury's tool set mm -hmm. so that I can play bad Mercury decks and then accept <laughs> that I should import those tools into Sable and play good criminal decks instead. Fantastic. All right, Javi, over to you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, support the Shaper cards being spoiled. Um, I did the mm -hmm. um, art briefs for all of them. Um, so I am um, just can't wait to see what the uh, community reactions are going to be. I think uh, particularly a couple, at least a couple of them you're going to absolutely love. So um yeah can't wait to see them yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that video coming out on friday so should be a lot of fun and uh pants how about you Nuvem. i'm looking forward to playing Nuvem so much it seems like <laughs> such a cool identity i've already got like two or three different ideas in mind of what i want to play out of it and it's it, it's way corp in a way i haven't been in a while yeah i realized I of course it would be new <laughs> of course it would be new Vim from the resident max player i'm going to play max until she rotates you cannot pry her from my cold dead hands until that point uh the yeah cards Nuvim makes a lot in the of trash. sense <laughs> cards do belong in the trash uh thus why anarch is so good um all right uh one other announcement my saturday stream so that is the stream not tomorrow not the Tomorrow is Thursday for me. The day after is Friday. So the 16th, the, the three streams from today is going to be pushed back by one hour. So it will be starting now rather than ending now because I'm going to a CO and don't want to risk uh, missing the CO uh, or missing getting things mix, mixed up in that. So uh, on Saturday the 16th, it will be starting at 7 p.m. Eastern rather than 6 p.m. Eastern. Otherwise, we're still going to be at 6 p.m. for the next two days. Uh, my spoilers will be out Friday morning. I want to do give a big thank you to Izzy, to Ian, and to Neuropanzer uh, for coming on. It's been a real pleasure, and uh, thank you all so much. Take care, all. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone. That's been a blast, yep. us. 
And thanks yeah, everyone. As for, always, a pleasure. And thanks everyone for watching. And I'll see y'all tomorrow night.